How often do you get to this level of painting and think to yourself, Damn, this sketch is looking real clean. This one's going to be a banger for sure. Only for you to start coloring and then suddenly start feeling like bathing with a toaster. Well, don't worry my friend. Because this is where Aidairo comes in. The artist of the manga, toilet bound Hanakokun and an incredible illustrator. She uses highly saturated color and applies it in a very interesting way to create these stunning illustrations. So in today's video, I want to copy and break down one of her illustrations while explaining what I learned along the way and finally finish off the study by trying to apply what I learned to my own art. For the study, I decided to copy this illustration of the main character of her manga. As always, I broke down the study into these stages, so feel free to skip to the sections you're interested in. The line art of Aidairo's illustrations is very bold and graphic, very befitting of a manga artist that draws in her style. Look at her manga art, you can recognize a pattern. Similar to what I explained in my video about Keimo Chizuki, you can see that the line art is thick around the silhouette of the characters, and is thickest around the focal point, which is almost inevitably the face in a simple character illustration. The line art becomes less thick inside the silhouette, or the thinner the material is of whatever you're drawing, something like a cape. The difference to Keimo Chizuki, however, is that the line art isn't forcefully clean. There are little bumps in the line art, which is probably a way to adapt to the fast industry of manga creation, but is an iconic feature of the Aidairo style. The line art is also always in black. Whenever Aidairo wants to color it, she instead opts to color over it, either by doing these weird scratches or with a block of color. This is an important aspect that I will expand on in a later chapter. One thing that is very consistent about the color palette of Aidairo's illustrations is the use of form color. Look at her character illustrations, you can almost condense 95% of the colors used into shades of red and orange. Many of these colors are also very saturated, yet the piece still feels harmonized and the focal point still feels very clear. I'm not exactly sure how this works, but my theory is that instead of using color saturation contrast to define a focal point, she uses color value contrast. Look at this piece, I'd conventionally have said that the focal point should be where it's most saturated. But there are many spots of high saturation scattered all over the illustration. But if you look at it in black and white, the eyes are almost immediately drawn to the face due to its position and value. She sometimes also uses other methods to define the focal point. Like in this illustration, where the eyes of the characters are in a very saturated blue, which is very rarely used in her work. So it's an instant pull of attention. The backgrounds are either just a solid color, or a masterpiece that probably took as much time as I needed to stop being maidenless. But the pattern you see in most of them is that they complement this character illustration in some way. The solid colors are either from around the same colors used for the character, or the complementary color of it. The same applies for more complicated backgrounds, but except that, well, it's more complicated. Okay, so now that I've explained how Aidairo sets up for this stage, I'm gonna start to analyze the rendering techniques she uses. While copying her illustration, I realize that Aidairo rarely uses, or almost never uses, soft edges. The copy study was all done in a hard round brush. This was very surprising to me, since I associated her art with a softer look. She achieves this using multiple rendering techniques that are hard to spot at first viewing, and unless you go in to analyze the art. The first technique is painting with many similar colors in a small space, or with a difference so small that you don't recognize it. Take the eye in this illustration for example. It looks quite smooth and soft from afar, but when you zoom in, you see that it's actually just a cluster of all types of different colors painted very close to each other so that it gives off this look. Another example is in this illustration, where you see that there are actually multiple colors applied to this shadow shape, but they are so similar that they appear to be like a gradient. The second technique she uses are the scratches. She uses these scratches 
to let color bleed in with each other, creating a softer look while maintaining the hard edge. This technique is one of the most iconic things about Aidairo's art, and she uses it all the time, not only to create soft edge, but for many different reasons. For example, she uses it to add a little touch of color to places where a larger shape wouldn't fit, or to color the line art without actually changing the color of the lines themselves. The base color of the skin is always at least somewhat saturated. For the face, start by adding a saturated shadow color filling the forehead. She does sometimes use a less saturated color for this, but that's a stylistic choice you have to make. After this, an even more saturated color is used around the eyes, usually with a hard edge on the eyelids and then slightly blended in on the cheek. I did this with the default blend tool in Clip Studio Paint, but you can use any blend or smudge tool in your preferred software. Next are the slight touches of color along the edges of the face and on the nose. Lastly, you can add some scratches wherever you feel they fit. In this particular study, she does it mainly on the cheeks. As for the eye, you can see that the upper eyelids are considerably thicker than the lower eyelids. The eye itself is also quite large. The rendering of the eye follows the usual concept of dark at the top and bright at the bottom. The upper side and the edges are painted with a combination of multiple shadow colors. Next is the bright area at the bottom, which I painted on a layer above the line art. On this same layer, you can start adding the scratches on the eyelids, the iris, and inside the eye. Feel free to experiment with this technique. The hand is a little different compared to the face, but follows the same principles. The fingertips are painted with a saturated pink and blended in using the scratches technique. Then, with the saturated shadow color, add shadows where you would usually add them to define the form of the hand, so along the edges of the hand and fingers. Lastly, just add some more similar colors to make the skin feel warmer and add interest. This last tip really applies for any part of the drawing. The rendering of the hair really depends on the hairstyle. However, the rules I explained earlier still apply here. The only tip I have is to keep it simple. Just think of where the light would hit depending on the light source and paint everything else in a different shadow color. Following the hair strands and the edges of the head usually is a safe option. You can never go wrong with it. Just remember to use a combination of fitting colors and the scratches technique if you want a similar look as I Dairo. The same applies for the clothes. Just follow the folds using a good reference and experiment. Okay, now to my attempt of creating an illustration in a similar style, using what I learned from the copy study and analysis. But before we get into it, you need to realize that you always need the references of some sort. Here are the ones I used for the study. I recommend you go for more references, but I kinda was rusty and had to rush the study to complete the video, so I relied heavily on those two. With that out of the way, I started the drawing. I'll quickly be going through my thought process in every stage. For the sketch, I already had a reference that I was copying the pose of, so that was quite simple. The hard part, however, was to adjust the proportions of the face to the Aidairo style. But with a little trial and error, I figured it out. The line art was also quite simple, just keep in mind the line weight rules we discussed earlier. The rendering I wasn't too satisfied with, but there are a couple of things we can learn from it. First is to keep notes of what you want to focus on. Far too often did I just forget something important, yet very simple to apply only for me to realize at the end that I could have applied it easily. Second is that a good lighting setup and a good render of the eye can absolutely carry an illustration. Lastly, is that there is a lot of thought put into each stroke and technique in Aidaro's art, which requires a lot of experience and experimentation. And due to time constraints, I failed to achieve that. So don't be discouraged if you don't become a master of the style in 10 minutes. Take your time and keep experimenting. I think the piece looks cool overall, but it just fails as a replication of the style. At least that's my opinion. And this concludes the little study. 
Here's one last look at how my copy study turned out. And here's my attempt to replicate the style. As always, thanks for sticking around until the end. I really hope you learned something new and that you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing and liking the video. It's a win-win for both of us. Again, I really appreciate it and I wish you a happy rest of the day. Take care.